How's it going guys? Today we are going to be trying to diagnose our washer fluid system. Um, I actually have mine out. Normally your washer reservoir would sit right here. It kind of slots into this bracket. You can see right over there. It slots into that thing. Um, I do have my catch can right here. This is normally there. Um, it actually goes off to the side typically. But I have the washer out. Let me go ahead and show it to you. It's this thing right here. Um, and as you can see, there's two little nipples on the bottom uh, for each of the pumps, one to the back, one to the front, and then off to the side there's a sensor um, just for the level. Um, and here are the old pumps. So the reason I went ahead and pulled all this apart is because I, nothing worked. Um, I went ahead and tried to wash my windshield, nothing would happen for the front or the back. Um, now the way that I went about this at first is I went ahead and pulled the reservoir up because um, it just slides down onto the side. Um, and this connection right here is one connection and then this connection right here, so you guys can see them. It's a clip and then these two little stupid plastic things. These two I can never ever get off so I went ahead and just cut the wires. Um, but basically what I went ahead and did is I pulled the pumps off and I actually just hooked up some spare wires that I had up to my battery right here. Um, and I went ahead and see if I could get them to turn on. Um, and the one for the front, uh, you can see it connects to this cable right here, because I know that's the front. Um, it, it didn't do anything. Um, basically, the motor just stayed silent when I hooked it up to 12 volts. I went ahead and went forward and backwards to see if it was a polarity issue. It was not a polarity issue. Pol polarity issue. Um, all it did was nothing. Um, the back one, actually, it made a click but then it wouldn't continue spinning. Um, so I don't know what the problem with that was. But either way, I decided it's time for these old 30, 33 years at this point, three, 33 year old pumps to go ahead and get thrown away and new ones put in. Um, Nissan sells the front pump still, but it's like $50 just for the front. Um, and I'm not into that. So I went ahead and went on Rock Auto and they carry these generic pumps right here, um, tri Trico. Uh, and I went ahead and got two of them because they look really similar. Um, but one big issue that I found so far is this is where it pulls from and this is where it puts out. Um, so you can see you have a regular nipple there, but this one has a pretty big grommet that it fits into. Um, that's where the feed comes from and that's supposed to go directly into the reservoir. The problem is, is that we have a nipple in and a nipple out. You can see this is the original pump. It's got a nipple in and a nipple out right there. But when I was looking at these two, put them right next to each other. They look very similar. Let me see if I can focus for you guys. They look really, really similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually see, this one has a bracket on it. I'll go ahead and take that bracket off real quick, but I'll see if this bottom plate here will actually fit onto this bottom. You can see there's three screws on the bottom of this that hold that on. I've already taken it off and it's just an impeller underneath that pumps it. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can move that bottom plate from the old pump onto the new one. Um, because if we can do that, if it fits correctly, um, then we can just use the old one nipple to nipple. Uh, if not, we'll, we might have to drill a hole into this reservoir somewhere like on a flat side right here um, that we can actually fit this weird grommet thing into. Um, and I'm really not looking forward to doing that. So hopefully we can get this to fit um, or some sort of weird adapter in order to make it work. Cause I really don't wanna have to drill a hole in this and accidentally have something leak out if I get it wrong. Um, but the back pump is actually a little bit different. Let me go ahead and pull it for you guys. Um, it's not quite the same motor style. Um, you can see, put it right here next to this one. It doesn't have a detachable bottom like the other one does. Uh, so how we're gonna make the back one work, it's still a little bit iffy if we're going to be able to. Um, we might have to do something Jeez, I have no idea. We're gonna go ahead and figure it out though. Maybe I'll 3D print an adapter for this. Um, and if I do and it works well, I'll go ahead and put it on the zgarage.net for you guys who just wanna get these generic pumps as well and adapt it to your new one. But let me go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and start with the front. I'm gonna see if I can pull this off and put it on that one. Um, see if we can just make it work, <laughs> make it work like nothing. Cause these look almost exactly like the same pump. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what we can do. All right guys, if you can see right here is the old motor. Um, I went ahead and took the bottom off of it um, and you can see right here is kind of like a bottom like seal plus disc kind of thing. Um, I also noticed that the bottom one has both nipples coming out of this bottom piece versus the new one obviously has a nipple coming out of the rest of it. Um, so I tried putting this thing onto that um, and it fits um, but it, it's not very happy about it. This one has like little posts around these dots 
um, where the screws go through. Um, also the seal type is different between that one and this one. Uh, this one uses a flat washer it crushes and then this one uses a o-ring um, that fits inside. And uh, it just wasn't working too well, so I went ahead and tried plan B, which was to take the uh, bottom plastic piece from the new one and try to fit a tube into it. So normally the uh, water would come through there um, and then up into it, um, but what I went ahead and did is I actually just bored it out very slightly. The drill bit I used was 730 seconds, um, but I might go up one step, um, so that would be... 830 seconds or whatever that would reduce down to um, and it fits pretty well um, whether it's watertight or not we'll go ahead and have to figure out um, I'm, go I'm gonna go ahead and go with this uh, because if we do something like this we're going to be able to use both washers the front and the back um, versus if we were going to, do, going to do something like that this is the only from a front washer so I don't know how exactly we would adapt that to the back one um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this out I'm gonna go and put this on the front one obviously I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to one of these nipples down here and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can make the washer work. All right guys, so I went ahead and put the reservoir right there. I got that coming out of the bottom and then going up into the hood. And if you can't tell, there is a little bit of water on the hood now. Um, it only came out of this side so far. I think it's just because the entire system hadn't actually primed yet. Um, so that one has air in it still. Um, so I can go ahead and diagnose that later if it's not coming out. But other than that, it worked and I'm super happy about it too. Um, it worked, it had a very strong spray. Um, obviously my hood was up so it sprayed just right here. Um, but it should be able to spray the entire windshield properly. Um, you can see my uh, wiper blades got stuck in the middle there. Uh, but now what we can go ahead and do, now that we know this works, we're going to go ahead and make a final mounting position and everything for it. Uh, so if you remember, this bracket right here, it fits correctly, um, but our new one has the pipe going out of the center on the bottom. Also, it's not flat like the uh, old one was. You can see this one's flat, um, which is why it was able to um, work properly. So we're going to go ahead and see what we can do mounting wise. Um, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to just kind of have them sitting down there. We just don't want them banging around because that can actually break the motors. Um, so whatever we'll do, we'll fix that. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mock up. This is the second motor I got for the uh, rear windshield washer. I'll go ahead and get that as well. And then we'll go ahead and cut these lines to length so that they need, so that they're not, you know, super long like these. Um, and it's looking pretty good, guys. Let me go ahead and do all that and then I'll update you next. Alright guys, I wanted to go ahead and show you real quick how I did this. Um, so this was the 730 seconds. This is 1564 on this side, um, just to kind of help it get through a little bit more. Um, you're going to go ahead and take your piece of tubing. I don't remember the diameter of this. I'll probably flash it on the screen if I can figure it out. Um, but basically you're going to want to just kind of crush it into the bottom. Um, and you're just going to collapse the tube basically. So it's not going to come out looking very good, but you're going to collapse it. And this is silicone that I'm using. Um, so it won't really hurt it at all. We'll just go ahead and push it all the way up and through. And you can see it's here at the top now. We'll go ahead and pull it. And you're going to pull it and you're going to actually make it straight now so it's not collapsed. It looks really good. And then we're just going to go ahead and pull it back down because that's where the propeller is. And we're going to put it right there so it's nice and flush at the bottom. And there you go. That's how you get it nice and clean. Um, now we're going to go ahead and stick this back on the motor. Um, because there's three holes here, you can choose three orientations. I don't have a specific answer for what it needs to be. Um, I'm just actually put. I put the other one forward. I think like right here, so that all of them are kind of on one side. So you had a lot of space that was flat on the back that won't protrude anything. Um, the way I'm going to mount it to the actual reservoir is just the zip tie um, up against the little tab that the original ones came off of. Um, so putting it like this is good because then we have all this area here that we can mount it to. Um, and this one does actually come with two holes, um, so you can do like slightly offset like here or here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there, and then we'll go ahead and put this back together, and then we can start on the wiring. Alright guys, I believe I misspoke earlier. I said that this bundle of wires here was the front pump and the back pump wires. Uh, this one right here on the right is actually the level sender. You can tell because there are two per, uh, parallel connectors in there. Um, this wire right here is actually the pump for the front. And if you can see, it's got a 90 degree from each other. So one of them is flat and one of them is straight up and down. Um, and that's actually perfect because our new pumps um, are the exact same way where they have one pin that's flat and one pin that's 90 degrees. Um, I also misspoke about this. This is not the rear pump. This is the front pump. You can tell because it's got the 90 degree connectors and the back pump we had to cut the wires off of because it actually doesn't have a connector on it. 
Um, but anyways, it's regardless, we're going to go ahead and be able to plug the front pump in just fine using this old connector. Um, it fits perfectly. I've already tested it as you saw before. Um, but we do need to go ahead and splice in some wires from the rear pump. So in these kits with the general, uh, just the generic water pump, uh, it comes with its own wiring harness. It also comes with these little uh, connector doodads. These are okay, um, but the problem with these is it's kind of a one-time use and it'll actually splice and cut the wire in half. Um, when you use it, so you can't take it off again and then redo it if you need. And you can't really check um, either unless you take like a multimeter to the end of the harness there. So what we're going to go ahead and do is instead of using these guys here because they're, I don't want to call them, they're simple, but they're also kind of primitive um, in the terms that it doesn't work that well in the long run. We're going to go ahead and use either a butt connector on the end of these or we're going to use uh, another quick disconnect that I have. Uh, because this will connect disconnect right here, so if we ever need to take the entire assembly off, we can go ahead and just unplug the pumps. Um, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is also put some connectors here, because I just got more of them than the butt connectors. Um, so we're going to go ahead and strip those wires back. We'll go ahead and strip the wires for these back. You can see when I cut them, I cut them really high up, so we have plenty of room from these stupid connectors down here. Because it goes into a wiring harness pretty soon, um, so we'd rather cut them higher than lower. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do that, splice in these, and then we'll have the wiring for all of them set up correctly. Alright guys, if you can see, I went ahead and got the wiring all sorted for the rear pump. Um, you can see it goes in like that. On these new ones, um, it didn't say which one was the positive and the negative. Uh, with the old wires, pretty much black is always negative, so we have red and a black, positive, negative. Um, the new wire has yellow, if you can see it, and red. Um, and I just guessed that red was going to be negative and yellow was going to be positive. I didn't crimp this down when I first did it. I just kind of slotted it in so I could sw switch them out if I needed. Uh, but it ended up being correct. Um, so the red positive um, goes to the yellow wire, which is this, oops, eh, this flat one. So whichever one is your flat one is going to be a positive and then the one that's standing up is the negative um, but I went ahead got those all in I tested it to make sure it was correct um, and it is so now we can go ahead um, back here is the wire that goes all the way to the back window I'll go ahead and stick this on the pump um, and then I'll go ahead and stick this one on the new pump and we'll go ahead and install it and it should make everything work Alright guys, if you can see, we went ahead and mounted these to the tank now. They look pretty good. I've got a couple zip ties on there holding them. Super professional and everything. Um, but we're going to go ahead and sit it up right now. Um, hopefully that there will be no leaks. I went ahead and tried to seal up those uh, silicone lines a little bit. Um, I'll have some pictures here on the screen. Basically what I did is I kind of pulled the line up a little bit further. Um, and then I took some RTV um, gasket maker and put it around. Uh, and then I went ahead and pulled the silicone line back down and kind of created a gasket in there. This was a specific type of gasket. It's a hardening gasket, so hopefully it'll kind of fill up all the cracks and then harden in place. Um, so hopefully we won't have any leaks. Um, I'm a little hopeful. And then I went ahead and let it dry for a little bit um, just so that we didn't get any uh, leaks from premature uh, seal from the seals not being dried full enough. But now what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that these are hooked up correctly. It actually doesn't matter which one goes where, um, cause they're actually both the same. Um, but we wanna make sure that the electrical connection for the front is on the, uh, the nipple, the one that has the nipple for the front, um, just to make sure that they're okay. So let's go ahead and take these, we'll go ahead and put it back in and we won't forget to put this sensor back in either. All right guys, so I went ahead and got this all hooked up here and I went ahead and turned it over and I noticed that this one for the rear was leaking quite a lot and it's leaking around where that O-ring kind of gasket is that we um, had to take off that bottom plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off. Um, if the O-ring is pinched or broken, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and use like that hard RTV gasketing again um, to go ahead and uh, seal it up. Um, I might go ahead and do it with both of them, um, but I'm going to do it with the back one just for now because that was the only one that was leaking. Um, but what you might want to do before you go ahead and hook everything back up, uh, just put your fingers over the outlets on here and then just kind of flip the uh, this uh, reservoir right side up. Um, and that will kind of just put pressure on it and you'll be able to make sure that nothing is leaking out. Um, but you can see uh, this one is leaking quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that up real quick. All right guys, as you can see, I got it all back together and it is looking really good. Let me go ahead and show you down here. The pumps are a little bit squished. There's one right there and then there's one back there that's kind of hard to see. Um, 
they're a little bit cramped, but they're doing pretty good. Uh, they're not actually touching anything. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it is. The only thing that I'm a little bit worried about are the actual uh, tubes that go from the tank itself to the pumps. They like to get kinked. Um, so if that is a problem in the future, I'd probably get a little bit of a thicker wall tubing that's not as likely to collapse like this thin walled silicone is. Um, and then you'd probably just have to adapt the uh, little white bottom pieces from the pumps again to in order to get to that. But we'll see how this does for now. I went ahead and filled it up a little bit with uh, some of the blue washer fluid and I marked where it's at. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and over the next day or two just kind of make sure nothing is leaking out. Um, and if it is, then I'll try to figure out where it's coming from and seal it up. Um, but hopefully this helped you guys um, in order to retrofit some pumps to yours. Because um, we don't want to pay those $50 for a new expensive uh, washer pump for something that we don't really use all that much. But there you go guys. If you have any questions, definitely drop them down below and I will try to answer them as best I can. I hope that this helped you guys and I will see you guys later.